My parents escaped the Vietnam War and Canada openly accepted them as refugees. But for hundreds of newcomers, they're not so lucky. It's one thing to flee from persecution because you're gay, but imagine having to prove that you really are. As Toronto kicked off Pride Week, I wanted to find these people and tell their stories. My first stop was 519 Church Street Community Center, where I met coordinator Lisa Gore. Six years ago, the Among Friends project was introduced to help LGBT refugees and immigrants. How do you prepare them for the actual hearing? Preparation for hearings should really be done by attorneys. But we do encourage people to make their burden of proof by becoming involved in community. The flaw of the refugee system for persons who are LGBT is asking people to prove that they are. Alvaro Orozco, who is originally from Nicaragua, failed to prove that he was gay to immigration in 2005. After I came to Canada, I had the hearing, the judge was on TV, yeah. and I was in a room, and I was there for five hours, and she argued why if I was gay, why I, was, why I didn't have sex at the age of 14 when I was in, in Mexico and the United States. His claim was rejected and he went off the radar to avoid deportation. Last May, he was picked up by the police and jailed for 20 days. It was a risk worth taking even though homosexuality was decriminalized in Nicaragua in 2008. I used to be called faggot only every day. So every day I used to fight and I used to go home with, with, with bruises with my father. He used to beat me every day for, for being gay. While in jail, his friends staged demonstrations on his behalf. After the protests, his humanitarian claim was finally approved, allowing him to stay. And he's got big plans for the future. I want to finish high school. I want to go to college and to get uh, 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 my, my, my certificate as a painter and as a photographer. Even though I was happy for Alvaro, I realized that not everyone is as lucky. When I came back to the 519, I found David Paz Arube. He told me he's facing deportation because the judge thinks that Mexico is safe. So what is it like to be gay in Mexico? For me, it is like uh, shame. It is dangerous. It is um, impossible. You are always like target and uh, nobody's gonna help you. Gay rights have improved in cities like Mexico City, where same-sex marriage and adoption have been legal since 2009. But it's the memory of being mobbed by a group of men after leaving a gay bar that keeps David away. Like, they were asking me if I were, like, uh, gay. I tell them, no, that I wasn't. And then they start, like, pushing me, and they, they were, like, getting ready to punch me and, and all that. And I just remember feeling so scared, like, like, the only thing that did, that came out of my mind, I mean, it was like run away. Like, I think about my life, how is my life has been. And um, I think, um, well, I don't have family here, and uh, I'm alone. So I'm just, sometimes I don't find. <laughs> I didn't find a reason to, to be, keep doing, keep going. <laughs>